Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com and welcome to the fifth chapter of the Intro to Joomla series. In this chapter, we're going to be discussing categories and how we use them to organize articles in Joomla. So every article in Joomla has to be in some type of category. The default category is called uncategorized. Categories are a hierarchical, linear way to organize articles. So for this example here, we kind of have these top level categories. Those are up at the top. They hold all the other articles and all the other categories. So uncategorized is an example of the default top level category. We can create additional top level categories. For example, if I had a website that is talking about different types of trees and animals, I could have some type of category structure that looks like this. I might have a top level category called living things with a subcategory for plants and animals, and then a subcategory under plants for specific types of plants like trees, and you can just go on forever. Now, articles can go in categories, subcategories, top level categories. They can go in categories that contain other categories. So there's a lot of flexibility with where we can put our articles into a category structure. It is up to you to determine which type of category structure you're going to use for your website. You can be very generalized and have dozens of articles in one category, or you can make them very specific. So you only have one or two or a few articles in each category. I tend to like to keep it to somewhere between like 10 and 20 articles per category, but as your website grows, you may find you need to create additional subcategories or your categories might just be large, which which is fine. Joomla does support you having basically an unlimited number of articles in a particular category. So let's take a look at my test site here. I'm in the admin panel. I'm going to go over to content categories and we can take a look at the category manager. So right now, the only category I have is the uncategorized category. And we can see that there are nine published items in this category. If I click this, it's going to filter and show me all of the articles I have in that category which right now is all of the articles on my website. You can see I created a few demonstration articles here. I have some articles on cats and dogs and some general site pages like frequently asked questions, the privacy policy and the terms of service. And what I wanna do now is organize these into categories. What I'm gonna do here is go back to that category manager and create a new category. This looks very similar to the article manager, our article edit page, except now we are editing a category. Instead of having the article content down here, what we have is a an editor box where we can define a description for our particular category. So I'm gonna call this one pages and the alias pages, and this is just going to be general site information. The parent, this has no parent, so that means it's going to be a top level category. And we'll just save that like that for now. And we'll go back to articles. And I want to put my three kind of general site information pages into this category. We can just click on the article and go over to category and move it over to pages. Save and close. And let's get rid of this article filter here. And now we can see frequently asked questions is in that pages category. If you want to move multiple articles into a single category at once, you can do batch operations by selecting multiple articles. So if I want to move FAQ, privacy, and in terms of service into that new category, I can just select them with a checkbox, go to actions, batch, copy or move to category, and I'm going to move those to the pages category. So we process that. And now all three of those articles are in that pages category. All right. Let's do the same thing while we're at it and just categorize the rest of the articles I have here. So I'm going to create another article called animals. 
I'm going to leave the alias blank, just let it auto generate. Now you don't have to have a description for each category if you don't want to. And I'm going to create one for dogs now and place that in the animals category. So now we have three top level categories, uncategorized pages and animals and dogs is a subcategory of animals. And I just did that by setting its parent to animals in the category editor. We'll do the same thing for cats. Set that to animals. And now we have four different categories, two of which are subcategories of animals. All right. Let's just go ahead and organize these guys. So I have an article on dogs, another article on dogs, another article on dogs, and I'm just going to move all three of those into my dogs category. Then we'll do the same thing for the cats category. And finally, I have one that's just like a general information article on animals. And that one we can just place in the animals category by itself. So we can have articles in the top level categories and the sub, -ca sub level categories. Now to view these on the website, we're going to take a look at some of the different category view options. Oops, so go to the main menu, create a new menu item, and let's take a look at some of the menu item types we have available for categories. There's a few of them. We have category blog, category list, and list all categories in an article category tree, and featured articles. So let's talk about featured articles first. So featured articles is just like the home page, and that displays a blog of a particular, well, by default, it displays a blog of all the featured articles on your website. But if you want, you can go over to the blog layout field and specify individual categories. So that's just like the, the default homepage layout. So I'm not gonna get into that one too much, but that's how featured articles works. The next one I want to talk about is the category blog, which is a lot like the featured articles layout. So I'm going to create a new menu item called animals. That's going to be a category blog and it's going to be category blog of the animals category. We'll leave that as a top level menu item and save it. Refresh the home page and now go over to that animals category. As you can see, I have a blog layout at the top here. And that is showing my one article in the animals category. Remember, all the other articles are in the subcategories dogs and cats. If I click on the subcategory names, I can access the articles in the subcategories and it continues on with that blog type of layout, which is the default layout. So if I go to animals cats, it does the same thing for cats. I can click on the article title and it brings me finally to the article, the individual article page. So we don't have to link to every single article on our website. We just have to link to the categories and the navigation is automatically generated for us at the top here using the article alias and all that good stuff. All right. Next thing I want to take a look at is pages. So we're going to create a new menu item for pages. And I want this to be a category list. So I'm going to have this list all the articles in the pages category. We'll save and close that. We'll refresh. And now if I click on pages, it takes me to a category list, which is different from list all categories. And I can see the articles under that pages category as a list with some information about them, like their author and the amount of hits. If I wanna configure some options about this list, I can go to the menu item, list layouts, and we can actually hide some of this stuff we don't need, or we can show more. We can show dates and stuff if we want to. Um, if I wanna get rid of hits, and keep the author and maybe show the date it was published. So date published, save, and we reload that. 
now I can have my title, my publish date, and my author date, and the hits are gone. If I sort, if I click any of these headings, I can sort from top to bottom by the publish date. And since I'm the only author, the author, well, it's going alphabetically by me. And I'm Kevin, so I'm the only one there. Anywho, if I click these articles, it takes me to the single article page. And now I'm at home slash pages slash frequently asked questions. And this is, again, coming from that article item alias. And this pages is coming from the menu item alias. All right, now let's take a look at the subcategory options here. So if I create a subcategory for dogs, let's say, and we make this a category blog, and we set the category to dogs, and we make this a sub menu item of animals. So really it's just kind of like a mirror of the way we have it set up in the actual categories. I have this dog menu item under the animals menu item. Now if I go to animals, you can see we have this dog links here. I click dogs, now it shows in my menu. I'm at animals slash dogs. That's very much like it was before with that category blog layout that it was doing by default. So cats doesn't have a menu item defined and it just takes me to do the same thing. It looks the same as it did for dogs, except now I'm under animals slash cats and I can't see the cats part in the main menu because there's no menu item for cats. If I create a category list to cats, so articles, category list, cats, and now we take a look here. I'm going to make that a subcategory of animals. Now if I go to animals slash cats, it takes me to a list instead of a blog like it did for dogs. So it's going to take me to whatever layout I specified in the menu for that category. If I specify the menu item as a category blog, it takes me to a category blog layout. If I specify it as a category list, it takes me to a list layout. And no matter where I go to view that category from, so if I'm in an article, for example, and I click the category cats under the article info, it's going to take me back to that list. If I'm in a dog article and I click dogs, it takes me back to that blog because that is what I specified in the menu. So the way you specify your menu items is very important because that is the view that Joomla is going to direct the users to whenever they click a link to that area from any page on your site, really regardless of how they got there. All right, so those are the basics of the layouts for list and category blog and how to organize articles. The last menu item we have to look at here is the list all categories and article category tree. So I'm just going to say all cats or all categories. And save and close that. And let's take a look at what that guy does. And if I click on all categories, it kind of gives me this drop down layout or I don't know, accordion layout of all the articles on my website. We can also see that there is the category description being displayed underneath each item. And since pages is the only category that I actually gave a description to, that's the only one where it's showing the description. But I can see the article count. And this might be a good way to kind of direct users to your website's different categories if you want to just show them all in one particular spot. You can see too, again, even though I'm on this all categories list, if I click dogs, it redirects me to animals slash dogs because that's the defined menu item for the dogs category. If I click on cats, it takes me back to animals slash cats, which again is a category list. There's a lot going on here. I hope you're sort of getting the picture and understanding how these menu items defined relate to how the pages are presented on the website with displaying information and 
The last thing I want to talk about is some more of the options we have with customizing categories. So let's go back to the category manager. Let's go to animals, dogs. And let's go ahead and just give this a description. And let's take a look at these options. So we can see that under the category options, we have a default layout selection of either blog or list. So if I was to get rid of these menu items here for dogs and cats, and I was to set them both to lists, then it's going to make them a list by default instead of the blog layout like it did when I originally created them. So let's say I set that to list. And let's say for my image, I just use some sample data here. It has nothing to do with dogs. I'll just take this NASA image that came with Joomla. And we'll save and close that dogs category. Let's do the same thing for cats and take a look at some of these options and how they end up presenting on the website. So this will be my cats category. And we'll set that to a list layout. Now, since I have these defined at the menu item level, it's still going to take me to a blog um, category blog layout for dogs and category list layout for cats instead of a list for both, like I defined under those category options. If I go back to my main menu and I actually remove, if I trash these guys, now I want to go to animals and I click on dogs. You can see it takes me to a list. Animals, cats, it takes me to a list. And that's because those are what I defined at the category level. If I define them again at the menu item level, that's going to override that layout setting that I set at the category level under the options for list. But I want that to be a blog again. Make it a blog. Now if I go to animals, dogs, I have that blog layout back. There are lots of different ways we can get these different layouts. Um, I would encourage you to probably make menu items unless you have like a ton of different categories. I find that having these options set at the menu item level gives you the greatest control and you'll have a pretty clear understanding of what's going on by doing it that way rather than defining them at the category level. Um, but it would be useful if you had a ton of different article categories to define each one under here instead because you might not want to create a separate menu item for each individual category. All right, let's go back to all categories here. If we go to animals, we can see those descriptions are being shown, but the article titles are not being shown, or not the article titles. That intro image I selected is not being shown. That's because I didn't tell Joomla to show that article image anywhere, which is why it's not appearing anywhere. Regardless of how I get to it or click on any of these pages, those images I selected are not being displayed. So in order to display those, let's go back to our menu. I'm going to re-enable those trashed articles. So I'm just going to go back and publish both of those or those trashed menu items. And let's take a look at animals. We go to options here. You can see we have our default layout again, our intro text, and all that stuff. That has to do with the article options. Let's take a look at the category options. So the category options by default is set to, sh to hide under my global config. If I refresh that, go to animals. So that set it for the animals category. They're still not showing for dogs because I had to change that at the dogs level. And we go back into here. Category image show under dogs. Now if I go to home animals, dogs at the top of my dogs category, now I can see that category image that came along with the dogs. 
if we want to show the category description in the category itself, we could show that, we could show that. There's lots of different options we can play with under the category options at the menu item level in order to define kind of what gets displayed where with this particular layout. Now it's going to be different between the dogs and the cats because they are two separate menu items. So if I want to show the intro image for cats or the category image for cats, I would go to the cats menu item, set that to show and refresh. And now that image that I set at the cats category is being shown under the cats menu item. So those are a few of the category options you might want to play around with, notably the title, description, and image. There are lots of other options here. They are pretty self-explanatory. And you can always click help if you need additional help seeing what each individual option does. But those are the basics of category management. All right, so I believe I've discussed everything I wanted to with this chapter now. You can always read more on my website and in the Joomla documentations. If you have any questions, drop a comment below or leave a comment on my website. Thanks for watching and have a good one, guys.